Good morning. Welcome to our time of worship this Sunday morning on the, uh, the first Sunday of the new year, 2021. Welcome to Beulah Baptist Church. It's good to see each and every one of you gathered for worship, not only in the sanctuary, but also in the parking lot. A uh, few announcements that we do want to share with you. Uh, next Saturday at 1 p.m., the men in ministry will be meeting here at church. So we wanted to let you uh, make you aware of that next Saturday, 1 p.m., men in ministry here at church. Also out front, uh, underneath the portico, there is a table with a lot of uh, literature that is available. And uh, we encourage you to... Uh, Browse through those uh, magazines. There's some uh, excellent reading. And uh, to, to take that literature, literature home or even share it with uh, individuals that you think it might prove to be uh, beneficial toward. Um, but we, uh, uh, we, ha we have this literature and we provide it for you for your uh, uh, spiritual uh, growth and maturity. Uh, next Sunday, our deacons are going to be meeting following the worship service, and so be in prayer as they meet the first meeting of uh, the new year 2021. Of course, we continue to receive canned goods to uh, be used and distributed through the um, Cornerstone ministry. And then also we remind you that uh, 2021 offering envelopes are available. If you haven't picked them up, they are in the vestibule. So we encourage you to pick those up. Let us now unite our hearts together in prayer. Lord God, as we read your word, Time and again, we hear you saying, Behold, I make all things new. And Lord, as we gather here today on this first Sunday of the new year, our prayer is that we would hear your words anew in our lives. And we pray indeed, O Lord, that through your providential hand, that is working and moving in ways that we so often do not see, that, Lord, you would make things new. More than anything, O oh Lord, we pray that you would make us new people. Give us a new heart that's possible only through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Give us strength, O oh Lord, to live anew in our lives, that you might be reflected in our living, our daily living, and that, Lord, we might be faithful witnesses unto thee. Renew our spirits, renew our resolve for living for you and imitating Christ in our daily walk. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is Sing We Now of Christmas. Judy, if you'll play this through once, and then uh, the words are printed at the bottom of the um, uh, bulletin. And if you're inside, I invite you to stand as we sing together. Judy.
Be seated, please. I invite you to turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter. We're reading verses 1 through 4 and then verses 9 through 11. The scripture reads, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And in searching the scriptures, the scribes determined that uh, the scriptures said that it would be in Bethlehem where the Messiah was to be born. And so we pick up in verse 9. When they, and this being the wise men, when they had heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Today is the 10th day of Christmas. The 12 days of Christmas are part of our Christian celebration. The day following the Christmas season, the conclusion of the Christmas season, is called the Day of Epiphany. That's this Wednesday, January the 6th. Now that word epiphany means manifestation. It is the time of the Christian year when we recognize that God manifested himself in Jesus Christ. God revealed himself to humanity in the person of Jesus. Now, one of the main emphases of the day of Epiphany, January 6th, is the visit of the wise men to the child, Jesus. The scriptures say they worshiped him. It's fitting and appropriate only for God. And so in this passage that we've read today, the fact that they come to worship him, Matthew is making a statement that this child is God in the flesh. The wise men were men from the east. They were non-Jews. They were Persians. Iranians. And herein is a message also in this story that God has come for the salvation of all people. And that's good news. That's good news. He has come to all. He has come for all. Now, there are many truths in this story about the wise men, but today I want to focus on an observation made by John Killinger. He has said, much of the wise men's journey that first Christmas was made without benefit of the star. Initially, they saw the star in the east. Verse 2 tells us that. They said to King Herod, we have seen his star in the east. They saw it from their homeland, beckoning them to journey westward. And then they saw it again in verse 9. It says, And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them. And so they had seen it as they left from their homeland 
in the east and had journeyed to Beth, to, to, towards Bethlehem, stopping at Herod's palace. In between this vast journey, the indication is they were without its benefits much of the way. Why else would they have stopped to ask directions at Herod's palace? This speaks to us. Because like the wise men and the intermittent guidance of the star, we also have moments of seeing and knowing. There are times when we can see life with starlit clarity that goes before us. And then there are other times, nothing. We spend a lot of our journey of life in the dark. We have moments of great luminosity. Everything is clear. We feel we're on the right track. And then the light gives way to stretches of darkness. And we must walk without the light. We must journey without benefit of the light. With only the memory of the light to guide us. Faith is what we exercise in times of darkness. The star doesn't shine brightly at all times. And when it doesn't, we walk by faith. It says that in the Bible. The Apostle Paul says, has said that. How often have we quoted Paul from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7? For we walk by faith and not by sight. This story and this point is very appropriate for where we are in life right now. This past year has been a year unlike any I ever remember. There have been times of darkness. And we have experienced what it means to walk by faith. We have experienced the fears and the concerns of a pandemic. We have had to deal with economic issues that have arisen as a result of what one commentator remarked, that in some instances the cure was worse than the disease. We're reading so often now of small businesses having to shut their doors, go out of business because of the great difficulties that they have had to contend with. Sometimes it's hard to tell. It's hard to see traveling in the darkness. Our society is in the midst of darkness. I remember a story of a country farmer praying during difficult times saying, Lord, everything that's nailed down is just coming loose. In this past year, I don't know about you, but there are times that I have felt that way. Darkness. traveling, journeying in the darkness without benefit of the light. Only the memory of the light. Is there hope for the moments of darkness? as people of faith, as Christ followers, we dare to say there is hope. And it rings loud and clear from the word of God. Isaiah 9, 8 says, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them a light has 
shined. Good words. Good news to those dwelling in darkness. A light has shined. Isaiah went on and he said, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Matthew 2.9 says, Lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. In the prologue to John's gospel, John chapter 1, verses 9, and then verses 4 through 5, he tells us the true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And we believe that by faith. In the midst of darkened days, by faith, we believe in that light that will ultimately come and guide our ways. Times of darkness will ultimately give way to light, God's light. Ultimately, the guiding star appears. Ultimately, God illumines the way. The way that leads to him ends with Christ, who is the light of the world. A young man in the family had the chore of collecting wood to keep the wood stove stocked. That was an important job to have because that was the way the home was heated. One day he delayed on his assignment. And that evening his father reminded him of his chore that had yet to be done. His response was, it's dark outside and I can't see the woodshed. His father gave him a flashlight and he said, you don't need to see the woodshed. Follow the path and the flashlight will lighten every step of your way until you reach the woodshed. Is that not what it means to walk by faith? We don't always see the end of the journey. We walk by faith. Enlightened by the light that we have already experienced, trusting that the light will shine again to lead us forward in God's providence and God's grace. I'm reminded that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the path. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the life. Jesus is the light. Every New Year's, <clears throat> I get out a three-by-five card that has a, a statement on it. It reminds me of a great truth, and it, it reminds me of the direction that I need to take in life with my faith. This past year, I discovered that there is a story behind this statement. I didn't realize that there had been a story behind it. But the story behind this statement gives it perspective and really gives it more power. It seems that the background of the statement were from the days of World War II. 
Great Britain had experienced a terrible year of bombings and destruction due to the, the German Luftwaffe. People were despondent and depressed. They were dark days. King George gave a traditional New Year's address. And on this particular year, he was extremely burdened on something that he could say to his people that would lift them up and give them hope. And so King George addressed his people at the turn of the year. He spoke of the darkness that they had been through, but he spoke of hope and light, and he said this, I said to the man who stood at the gate of the new year, give me a light that I might tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out in the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. And that shall be better to you than light and safer than a known way. Did you hear that? Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. Go out in the darkness. Put your hand in the hand of God. That shall be better to you than light and safer than a known way. And the people of England overcame the darkness and the despair. They became victors and conquerors. Because of faith, because of faith, they went out into the darkness and they put their hand into the hand of God. May we do likewise in our journey through the darkness from light to light. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, with the light of Christmas behind us, for so many now, Lord, the darkness of winter sets in. And so, O oh Lord, this message from your holy word speaks to us. that in the days of darkness, we can continue to walk in faith, knowing that your light will eventually illumine our paths. How thankful we are, O oh Lord, for Christ Jesus, who indeed is the light of the world. In his name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning is As with Gladness, Men of Old. A hymn that speaks of those wise men and the words are printed on the inside of your bulletin. We extend a word of invitation to you this day. Because you see, Christ Jesus extends his hand to each and every one of us saying, Come, follow me. Have you ever made the decision in your life to follow Jesus? Well, we invite you to make that decision today if you've never done so, to ask Jesus to come into your life and to be your Lord and Savior. We invite you to do so. We invite you to rededicate or recommit your life on the first Sunday of a new year. What a more appropriate time than to do so. Or well, we also invite you that if you uh, are 
seeking a church home and you feel like God is leading you to this place to become a part of the family of faith here, then we invite you to come and to say, I want to be a part of the family of faith at Beulah Baptist Church. However God is touching you, however God is reaching out to you, respond to him this day. As with gladness, men of old, let us stand as we sing. Please be seated. We come now to the time in our worship service on the first Sunday of the month, as is our practice to gather together and to uh, observe and participate in the Lord's Supper. We invite you to share and to participate. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know him personally and are seeking to walk with him in newness of life, then we invite you to come and to partake of this holy meal. I read from the first letter of John. He writes in the very first chapter, he says, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. These verses remind us of several things. It reminds us that God is light and in him is no darkness There is a call in these verses to us to walk in the light as he is in the light. Those are good words for us to hear and to be reminded to walk in the light, especially in darkened times. These verses tell us that we deceive ourselves if we say there is no sin in our lives. Elsewhere, the scriptures say, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are all sinners by nature and by choice. And we can't save ourselves. But the good news is, Christ Jesus is the one who has done everything possible 
to save us from our sins. The blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin, John says. And then a wonderful promise. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins. We have forgiveness of our sins through Jesus Christ. And then He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us. What a wonderful promise. And that is why we come together to share in the Lord's Supper. We are reminded of all of these truths when we partake of the bread and of the cup. We are reminded of what Jesus did for us through His death on the cross and His resurrection from the grave. And that's why we share in this meal. Let us pray. Lord, how thankful we are for the good news. The good news that, O oh Lord, you have done something about our sin. That you have done something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. Lord, we come this day confessing our sin to you and seeking your forgiveness we come with repentant hearts. And how thankful we are, O oh Lord, for the wonderful promise of the Scripture that the blood of Christ Jesus cleanses us from all sin. That His sacrificial, atoning death on the cross is the means by which our sin is forgiven. Lord, help us to truly confess our sins and to have a repentant heart. Lord, take out the stony heart that is within us and give us a new heart in Christ and help us to walk in the light as you are in the light. O oh Lord, now as we come to partake of these elements, Help us to truly remember you and what you have done for us and what you mean to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Scriptures say that our Lord Jesus on the night that He was betrayed sat at table with his disciples. And during the course of the meal, it says that he took bread and broke it. And I invite you to take the bread that has been distributed beforehand. And Jesus took that bread and he said, this bread represents my body given for you. Take, eat ye all of it in remembrance of me. Oh Lord, thank you for the sacrifice of your life. We are reminded of that deeply as we have partaken of this bread. And even now, O oh Lord, as we partake of this cup, remind us that your blood was shed. Your life was poured out for us on that cross that we might experience life eternal. Help us to remember and be thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In like manner, our Lord Jesus took a cup. I invite you to take that cup. And Jesus said, this cup represents a new covenant in my blood. Through Jesus, we have a new 
relationship with God through Him, made possible through Him. It is a relationship based on God's love and grace toward us. Jesus says, drink ye all of this in remembrance of me, and may we be thankful. O oh Lord, remind us this day of your life. Remind us this day, O oh Lord, of your teachings, seeking to bring us closer to thy kingdom and your heart. Remind us, O oh Lord, this day of your love for us. Remind us, O oh Lord, of your death, sacrificial, and for our sake. O oh Lord, this day remind us of your resurrection and your victory over death, and that through you, O oh Lord, we experience eternal life that none can take away. Lord, remind us of all these things. Help us to live simply, to love gently, to care deeply, to speak kindly, to pray daily, and leave the rest to you, our God. For it is in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, amen, amen and amen. The scriptures record that the apostles and our Lord sang a hymn as they left that evening of the Lord's Supper. And our traditional parting hymn is, Blessed Be the Tie. I invite you to stand as we sing together this parting hymn.